Hello YouTube and welcome to a new series on the channel. Today it is episode 1 of Shoujo Kageki Review Starlight. I believe I'm saying that correctly. Let's just go with Review Starlight most of the time though because I don't want to embarrass myself. If this is your first time watching my channel, then hello, hi, I react to anime. I like to do it in a little bit more of an analytical way, I, I believe, I hope, where I'll go through the episode again talk about plot stuff, talk about predictions, talk about where I think it's going, talk about what makes the episode tick and that kind of stuff. And I'm watching Review Starlight because it won, won, it won a poll. Uh, it actually came second, but it came second at such a close margin that it's now here anyway because I felt charitable, I guess. But also I really wanted to watch the show, so it's kind of like a me you know, dictator slotting it, you know, just putting my own thing in there. Because I think this is going to be entirely my shit. Which is, um, which is, yeah, song and dance stuff, I think, but, but we'll get into it. If you were somewhat interested in putting stuff on more polls in the future, so say whatever replaces Review Starlight, uh, my Discord is in the description. You can join there. There'll be a channel for requests for polls, and you can access that there. So what do I know about Review Starlight? Well, I can imply one thing from the name. That's because I know what review is. Or more accurately, I didn't know, but then I, I knew it was associated with theater, and then I looked up an exact term. Let me read it for you here. Uh, review, light form of theatrical entertainment consisting of unrelated acts, songs, dances, skits, and monologues that portray and sometimes satirize contemporary persons and events. Comes from the French street fairs of the Middle Ages, hence the word review, which would be been French, I think. Of course, it's maintained popularity through to, you know, the, the, the 20th century and beyond, I'm sure. And mo most notably, I think I remember a similar thing. Oh, what was that show called? Oh my god, I need to look it up now. Yes, Kageki Shoujo. I remember watching this not too long ago. Yeah, it aired in 2021. Um, and that was kind of review theater adjacent, I thought. Uh, it's kind of a very, very, very shoujo show, which is basically has an entire female cast, and it's very melodramatic and but I actually enjoyed it I thought it was quite good so yeah that that's where I see that connection there this is going to be musical theater adjacent essentially again my expectations can change based on the first episode of course and what I like to do before I start any show is have a little bit of a look at the staff and the key visual and set some expectations for what I think may happen in the show I think so I've had a look at the staff and I've, I've gone through a and and I didn't see much of note really so what's happened basically is that I've gotten into anime around 2016, 2017, pretty recently, all things considered, right? They've worked on a ton of stuff in bit roles and then Review Starlight, you know what I mean? And then they've worked through Review Starlight, which aired in 2018, something like that, uh, and worked through that basically until the movies come out relatively recently, I believe. So... They've been busy. They've been busy doing review style and haven't had a chance to watch much else of their work. There is some notable exceptions, however, which I'll bring up here. I think it's most importantly to talk about the, the director, and that is Tomohiro Furukawa. Uh, is the director of this show. It's a lot easier if I just get a and up here for you. What I like to do is go to a and and then just search director, because yes, they've done key animation work on a ton of other stuff, but I don't think that's indicative of a creative control over something. So it's very important to look at directing, and they've only ever done episode directing outside of Review Starlight which is a little bit disappointing, so there's not really much to go off. One thing I will note is a ton of work on Symphogear. I am currently watching Symphogear at the moment, and it is quite good, so this bodes well. Uh, wrote an episode of Penguin Drum, which I thought was kind of insane. Also did some storyboards for the opening in six different episodes, so that's definitely a pick. It's definitely something, if it shows up on somebody's resume, you'd be like, oh, it's Penguin Drum, right? Other than that, not really a lot that I can see, no. However, I thought the two very important people that I should have a look at are the composers of the music, because the music should be a huge part of the show. I know there's a ton of insert songs. I know that there's going to be musical theatre performances on a stage, presumably, so... Like, it's going to be an important element of the show, so it's something that I should consider. These two men, uh, Tatsuya Kato and... Uh, who is this? Yoshiaki Fujisawa have great freaking resumes. Great. So let's start with uh, Tatsuya Kato. Uh, and we go down to, to here. Uh, Love Live Sunshine is full of bangers. So I'm a big Love Live head. So if I see Love Live on anything, uh, it's probably good. 
It's probably going to be catchy. It's probably going to be my head. I'm probably going to listen to it all the time outside of this channel. If we pop over to Yoshihaki Fujisawa, we see similarly a ton of work on Love Live, including Superstar, which I think some of the best songs are in, and that's aired very recently. It, it bodes well for his work on this. The other one I wanted to specifically highlight is A Place Further Than The Universe for its insert songs. So we have them here. I think they're the absolute highlight of that show. Um, and it bodes well for the insert songs that are going to be in this, just kind of that real longing sense, I guess. Like, they're very hard to describe. I have one up here. Yeah, th this one. This one in this scene where she's running is the highlight of that show. So if we see anything remotely as good as this in that show, then we're in for a treat. We're in for an absolute treat. So overall, didn't really get much from the staff other than the musical stuff which I've gone into, which should bode for well-constructed, catchy songs that I want to listen to again and again and again and again, uh, which is good, which is really good. I guess outside of the show's context, I've heard that this anime is good. I've heard that people thought it was the best thing that came out the year it came out, I believe. I guess we have some 2018 contemporaries, including Violet Freaking Evergarden, uh, A Place Further Than the Universe, which is also quite good. Um, Psyche K, Psyche K was great. Uh, Yuru Camp, Yuru Camp, another classic. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Hinamatsuri is good. Yeah, a, a bunch of stuff that I'm relatively high on, which is good. If somebody's out here saying that Review Starlight is better than all of those and has seen all of those, then that bodes very, very well, considering my personal preferences as well. Uh, I think what I'll do now is bring up the key visual for mine and, and pop it up here in editing as well and then have a little bit of a look. Okay, so the key visual's up here now after a, a little bit of a setup. And I've got my pen out here and I would just want to circle certain things when I'm talking about them so you know who I'm talking about and why I'm talking about them. So for a start, I, I don't know if this is just a separation in the in the key visual or maybe it's some like strings which some people may be floating on or that kind of thing but a stage production this definitely here looks like a bit of a, a stage curtain i guess you would say uh, i don't know what this says up the top but i'm imagining this says review starlight okay so two central characters one's got a star in her hair so starlight <laughs> I guess. And a little bear. What is this little bear? I wonder about that. They've, they've got swords, which is strange. This is definitely fitting, you know, your traditional, maybe French medieval, not medieval, but you know, what I mean? like, like Middle Ages into Renaissance type energy to the theatre. Um, definitely a little bit fabulous with the short skirts as well and the boots, but, but I digress. Uh, character designs. You black hair are going to be kind of self-serious and really take this like you know it, it it's a job for me i gotta provide for my 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 whoever else i gotta you know the responsible one That that's just from facial expression and character design i've seen this character design like a million times think reina in in euphonium think uh think takina from the recently airing licorice recoil um and they're always paired with a character like this you know, a little bit happy-go-lucky, a little bit maybe not taking it so seriously, a little bit ganky, a little bit happy to be there, enjoying themselves, all sorts of different things, right? That's where I'm imagining this is going. She gives off major main character energy. It's something about the side ponytail as well that's given me that. And, okay, all, right. all I've got for the rest are, like, facial expressions. Okay, you with the glasses. You look self-serious and kind of, like, ridiculous and, uh, like, the this. That That's cool. You two seem mad. I wonder if you two are associated, but they definitely seem mad. You look, like, cutesy and maybe kind of annoying, just quietly. Um, but we'll say. You look mad, too, but in, like, a different way. Maybe, like, in a protective way. I don't know. Uh, you're just happy to be here. I like that. You you look a little bit strange. Tricky, maybe. Um, so I wanted to follow there for sure. That's just completely based on character design as well. And I've, I've scribbled all over this thing like a like a nonce. But hopefully that came through for, for what I was talking about and when. Um, yeah. Uh, seemingly we've got nine character designs here. I wonder if there's going to be nine characters. I wonder if it's going to be a larger thing. Is it going to be centered around a school, maybe? They're all seemingly school age i'm guessing um so maybe there's that aspect to it we're just joining the kind of theater troupe of the school 
Or is it a theatre school? Or is it some kind of weird sci-fi thing where there is no school? And we just do theatre because we're, you know, enslaved by the system? The, the other question I guess I'll have is, is this a character show or a plot show? Looking at this, you would think character show. You wouldn't think that the driving force of the narrative would be something external. You wouldn't think that the world would be in danger. You wouldn't think that we're going on an epic quest. You would think that the drama and the tension of the scenes would come from the relationships between the characters. But again, just guessing. I guess there is one other question as well, which is uh, watch order. So... My file set starts with Conte, but I'm imagining that that's incorrect. I, I'm imagining they're also specials because there's like 26 of them and I haven't heard about another season of this show. I, I was under the impression that there would be 12 episodes, a movie, and maybe some specials. But I've got four different things. I've also got something called Rondo, Rondo, Rondo. So where do I watch all of these things? Is it as simple as watching them in broadcast order, or is there some other weird things I have to consider? This is mainly a symptom of me watching Monogatari, where this is a concern. This shouldn't be a concern for this. I'm imagining I'm just going to watch them chronologically. I guess another couple of things while I'm just digging around here is that this is apparently based on a manga called Shoujo Kageki Review Starlight Overture, which came out in 2018 as well, so it's maybe a mixed media thing, I guess? Yeah, okay, no, the story of the nine stage girls from Seisho Academy before their TV anime. Okay, so maybe this is just like an original in a way, and this is just some preview material. Uh, any clarity there would be great. Uh, <laughs> Mal does a really bad thing of uh, interfacing this stuff. And okay, okay, so Rondo, Rondo, Rondo seems to be a summary movie in kind of like a, a sound euphonium sense. Uh, where they have their recap movies there as well, so maybe that one's less necessary. And then we have a sequel called The Movie, which I think is The Movie. We have some specials, and then the other is Conto, apparently. Mine says Conte, but go off, I guess. Which is some chibi shorts based on the, the show. Okay, so maybe those are less necessary than the actual specials. I see. All right, all right, all right cool. Another thing I probably should have talked about is this is by Kinema Citrus, which is a relatively well-known and respected anime studio. What do we have here? Made in Abyss? Made in Abyss is extremely good. Um, uh, Barakamon I know is good. <laughs> I hate Shield Hero, but anyway, I digress. Uh, b -b 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 is the Order Rabbit? That show is great as well. I've heard good things about Tokyo Magnitude 8. And yeah, not really much else there, but... But yeah, that, that, that's going into the studio a little bit, which I which I neglected to do. Uh, I think I've gone through expectations already. It's going to be good. Uh, other than that, subtracks. So I've downloaded something that has multiple subtracks, and I'm going to do something called the, the Chiyu Pass subs, just because they sound neat. But I've also got a couple of other subtracks here if I get them up now. Yeah, I, I could try Ripple, or I could try NSHAV1E, apparently. Um, or maybe that's just one whole subtrack. Weird. Uh, I've actually, yeah, I've, I've gone into the file and it says that there's only one subtrack on it. So maybe I'm just fucking lying. Um, that's the subtrack I'm using, however descriptive that may be. If there's some other expectation around that where you want me to change subtracks, maybe even for different parts of the story, then yeah. Maybe just hit me up. I'm very happy to change stuff like that. And yeah, I think that's rambling on enough. I'm going to jump into the first episode now, but not without some chill stuff. If you like this video and how it's going so far, uh, consider liking the video. If you like the video and you want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel. Comment below anything you thought about the episode, anything I could do to improve my presentation, comment below. I'm doing follow for follow on Twitter, so follow me on Twitter if you'd like me to follow you back. And the Discord, join Discord, love Discord, 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 Discord. And yeah, jumping into the first episode of Review Starlight right now. Radio got episode one of Review Starlight up here, ready to go. Let me pop that up on screen there. Uh, if you haven't seen any of my videos before, I'll do a picture in picture version in the description below, which you can access at your leisure. The quality is kind of shit, and that kind of is what it is. Uh, but, but for those that don't want to do that and potentially want a better quality video, I also have a little bit of the episode in the corner, as you can see. Down, down there, uh, as well as a timer on the screen so you don't get lost. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do a countdown here shortly. Yeah, just going to give it a 3, 2, 1. Radio, 3, 2, 1, go. Okay, hello main character. 
Star Lightor? And you're the other one that was on the poster already on stage? Okay, no, you're both on stage. Looked like you were sitting in a seat. You are sitting in a seat, I see. Okay. It is a somber tale. Eight girls? I thought there was nine. Is that in the back? A big tower? Okay. Girls Musical Review Starlight. Oh, classic. Alarm Clock Wake Up. Karen. Okay, Karen will be easy to remember. It's on Judy. It's the 14th of May? Yeah. Okay, a little bit of a ditz maybe. Yeah, this is some classic ass shit. I love this. Mahiru. What? You hungry? No, you forgot the hairpin? Is that it? Okay, the hairpin's important. It's all we need to remember. Yes, the hairpin. We need it. That's some queen shit. Great. I love the blown out background there. That was pretty good. Okay. And that's that's Star here. The intro's confused me, but we're, we're going to see. Ah. Are you? You seem like you would be the late one. Okay. Nobody's here. That's very official. Okay, so you can turn it on. You can become a good student. Okay. Are you the center? I know that's important in idol shows. I believe you were on the... Okay, so you have to call that out. I believe she was on the poster, Mahiru, as well. Down in the bottom corner, potentially. Not gay. Okay, good. We're off to a rollicking good start on that front. I'm making sure. Okay, glasses chan. Oh, I love her voice. On duty, like cleaning wise. I thought she was oversleeping already. Oh, the absolute vocals. Claudine? It's all very classy in the music, though, isn't it? Right? She's uh, she's nice and tall. Banana-chan. That's another good one to remember. Nana. Oh, Dai Banana. Perfect. Okay, there's lots of girls. The two in the back maybe don't seem as relevant. Yeah, okay. You, to pick out the anime character designs. Futaba. I'm sure I'll get lots of n names in time as well. I thought this was going in a direction where maybe the main character would be ostracized, but seemingly they're fine. You seem way older. Tendor Maya. Hello, Claudine. Okay, so this is seemingly something that people just say. It's not maybe an indicator that she's official. I see. 
Okay, determination. And you're the teacher. Gotcha. Okay, so seemingly it is a school. This is ballet? Question mark? Or maybe they're just practicing dancing and stretching and that kind of stuff. Okay, Music Academy. Whoa! I wish I knew more about dance to comment on it. Alright, so we do everything. Ninety ninth generation. Oh, that's so violent. Friends, as well as rivals. Perfect. I thought she would be eating bananas, but now she's got everything else. Food looks good. I'm actually a little bit hungry, so. She didn't want whatever that was. Bit of broccoli or something. What are you two doing? You're a nerd. Sexual festival? Got to start preparing now. That's good. Last year. So maybe they did the same show? They do it every year? Okay. For the eight of you. Was there eight there? To show how much you've improved. Okay. Ah. I feel intimidated if I said no. Tendo and Claude. Yeah, okay. These two. They do seem very, um... She did a great, like, prance, I guess you'd call it, before. I get the feeling that you two will be... Whoa! Do the photo. Yeah, she probably wants a role as well. So she's telling herself that as, as well as everybody else. Don't give up. But what about the star girl? Sure. Okay, ready for bed? Now yeah, she's struggling. Nah. Got the wrong textbook. What is gear? This is cool. I like the behind the stage. Yeah, what is all this scaffolding? Oh, hello, Tokyo Tower. Whoa, the background there's cool too. 
It's a metaphor, I think. Push! Damn, she's dead. Okay. A destined person from the past? Giraffe? Star giraffe. She's sturdy? She's getting sturdy? But what about that girl that was walking in? What is giraffe? Yeah, transfer student classic. Now look up and see Kagura Hikari. Okay. Sure. Was that a midpoint of the episode, maybe? Yeah, it feels like it. Bro, she thinks she's the main character for real. Yeah. She's sitting in that main character seat, though. Oh, that's pretty good. She's been, um, she's been in England. Huh. Okay, you seem jazzed about it. I wonder how Hikari is. <laughs> oh, she's overexcited. Okay, a third wheel. Is it a boarding school? Or do they all just live nearby? Because it's seemingly they're like leaving the school. Okay. Got a little bit of animation in the back. That was smick. Okay, she's very muted. What the hair clip promise? Okay. But why? The three of us? Yeah. At the the room also doesn't have three beds, which implies some things. Okay, she just left. Okay. No, you're fine. It's just you you can sleep in different rooms without being a bother. It's fine. Okay, you've clearly got some baggage of some kind. Get ready. Why'd you come back? Oh. Okay, that's very pretty. Oh, on the musical cue too. It's well done. Very well done. Okay. That's like a copy of the shot from um Claudine. So you must be pretty good. I'm imagining you're really good. That's potentially concerning some of the other people. Oh, that's a high jump.
Did my heart just go doki doki? What's going on there? Okay. What is Mon? Okay. Again. The seven person shared shower. It's very weirdly structured. It's not very conventional, is it? The way we're doing this. What was that phone? Cool and mysterious typo. Which kind of is. Okay, so seemingly we're dorming, yeah, okay. Why are you looking under the pillows? She's not going to be under there. She's a bit bigger than that. I agree. Maybe that's what you were looking at before. What was the phone? Because she was laying down there. She's on the move. She's just running away. Nothing in hand. Yeah, she's she's just running. Security guard's probably like, can you get out? Please? Okay, this is building up to a moment, yeah? Was this here before? Scary elevator? Whoa, what is going on? She's been taken to the other side. Yeah, I agree, what is happening? Oh. Okay. That same symbol that was in the training room. Okay. But what am I looking at? She's still back in that audience seat, yeah? Okay. Sure. Seems very heterosexual. This is cool, though. Why are they fighting? Why are we fighting? Whoa, she was fucking cocked it. What is the draft? Yeah, we get to notice that. <laughs> Why? Why? Okay. Yeah, but it doesn't seem like a play. It seems like they're fighting. Unless they're putting on a really good performance. Okay, we're fighting after the tiara. Okay, but it's like a metaphor, yeah? Or is it not? Or are they actually fighting? Are people going to die? This is very well animated, by the way. Yeah, seems pretty serious. If it falls off. Oh, she's cool. Why 
What? I agree. Okay. I am remade. Okay, that's fucking cool. Bogey hut. What? Some kind of furnace? Is she getting her own uniform? Yes, yeah, seemingly so. And then weapons as a result? Okay, that's fucking mad. Okay, I'll believe you. Oh! I stole your song. Okay. Get sunned. Okay. Sure. So it's not a physical fight for the tiara. They still need to be like graded? Question mark? Yeah, is she gonna be mad or happy? Hmm. Okay. I get the feeling of that. Like you shouldn't have joined this? Like I was trying to protect you from this in a way? All right, and that's it. Uh, well, that had a twist that I didn't know about. I just thought that they were going to be, like, performing a show. I didn't know that they were going to be, like, fighting and there was going to be a draft. Okay, but then again, this is very slice of life here. So I I don't think they're fighting to the death. I think they're trying to get like a star off their uniforms, and that's kind of like a I got you. That's kind of like a tag you're in. Okay, well she, she's still holding the thing. Uh -huh. Is everybody going to be in on this? Does everybody know about this? But Karen. Hello, banana. I like Banana. She's got a funny name. And you two. You two are just... Yeah. The rivals. The very classic rivals. I see. Next time? Are we going to do previews? We seemingly are not, but I'll... I'll uh, quickly jump into a little bit of analysis on that one and uh, kind of a rewatch on the episode. So, so I originally had this up here, right? And I'm still teetering on the edge. I don't know if this is a plot show or a character show yet. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to need to keep notes in the same way I'd need to keep notes for, say, a uh, Kubikuri cycle or, say, a Monogatari, where it is imperative that I keep notes because I need to remember what happened last week very in great detail and and, th and that kind of side of it. Please let me know if that's this kind of show. Um, so far to me, it's been a lot more like noticing things, noticing things, noticing things, rather than the plot getting moving. This episode's been very set up -y. It's like setting up the world, the characters, the general gist of what we're doing, as well as with that twist at the end on kind of revealing the twist on what we're doing. Um, so I don't think I need this yet. 
but it is here in case I do. I would write, hey, in, in episode two, we did blah, 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 and go, go from there. But um, but for right now, I, I don't see a need. I don't. But I guess just some general thoughts. Yeah, seems cool. Um, I can't wait to dive more into the characters. We, we, it's hard to introduce eight slash nine characters at the one time. Uh, and make it all work, but they've done a decently good job. I, w- I was, yeah, the, the the ones that I was like, she needs a little bit more character were the ones that were in that final scene. So I think they've done a good job there. I understand where a lot of the other characters have come from and, and what their kind of personality is. But yeah, just keeping an eye on those last two, because are they the only two that were aware of what's going on? Why has... Uh, Hikari come back? Was it something to do with what was going on downstairs? Uh, because seemingly outside of that, they're just kind of preparing for a, for, for, for like a play. And this isn't a play. This isn't for play. This is something else. Um, kind of this weird tiara job. So I I don't know how much else of the cast are aware of that, but, um, but that was the one, that was the kicker. That was your, that was your hook which is really, really good. That's a great place to put it. I was really enjoying myself first half of the episode. I'm not going to lie. I was like, I'm ready to just kind of chill out. It's going to be, you know, very slice of lifey. That's what it seemed like. And that's kind of my jam. But now I'm like super in. I'm super in after that twist. That's crazy. Um, and the the kind of set as well and kind of the animation budget just like tripled randomly. It was it was really good. It was really, really, really good. So I'll get the episode up here shortly and I'll, I'll kind of talk about what makes it work, what makes it tick, that kind of stuff. And kind of going into maybe some plot stuff that I missed because I, I was focusing on visual components as well as the subs, which is sometimes fraught. So maybe I missed some stuff. We'll, we'll see what I missed. Okay, so what we're going to we're gonna start on this intro, yeah, which is a bit of a strange one because I see main character, Karen. She's sitting in this seat right now, but then later in the scene, she's on stage. So I thought this was initially setting up like, hey, I'm I'm watching this from afar. I want to join this. That's not what's happening at all. She's already part of it. She's already part of the group. She's already at the school. That's already all good. I thought that we were heading in a different direction, basically from the first shot. And that's what Assumptions does to you. It makes an R set of you and me. So we're not going to do that anymore. We're not going to assume. Starlight, the story of a goddess guided by the light of the stars. Yeah, and then and then she's immediately on stage here, right? And that's when I should have clued in like, oh, it's, it's like a thing, right? There's also a scene late in the episode where she sits back on a seat and watches uh, the two fight at the end. Um, And that's kind of reflecting this, right? Kind of being an outsider, initially probably, right? As a child watching Starlight, wanting to become a part of it, and that process repeating right there at the end, seeing that there's more to this, and then wanting to join as well as a result. Yeah, because then we see young Karen here looking on, presumably holding hands with uh, with Hikari. However, these two uh, pulled apart never to meet again. Clearly, this opening monologue is at least partially about the main two characters. And then we have all of our different characters here, still in the same stage show, of course. But the story of those eight girls hopelessly captivates us. Is that the, the initial story about those eight girls, right? Because there's nine here. Let us go to that stage to become shining stars together. So, okay, clearly we have one with with the star hairpins in Hikari and then Karen with the crown. The crown is symbolic of the tiara in a way, right? So, so, so what's our grand metaphor going to be there, right, between these two? Clearly there's kind of a destined pair energy to it as well with both wearing the, the same hair clips throughout time and, and that kind of thing. I think what we see in a lot of the episode is Hikari acting distant. Um, this is probably because she knows something that the main character doesn't and is in the process trying to protect her from this side of it. We get a very classic uh, kind of opening scene here. You can, you can learn a lot about a character from their desk, from their room, from where they, they live. A, a room is a representation of a character overall. Messy, all over the place, snacks everywhere, clearly like the hungry one, clearly the sleepy one. Uh, this dinosaur clock is kind of spectacular. I kind of love it. Picture in the back, clearly this is an important relationship. Uh, I got the hairpin there as well and the handkerchief, which she comes back for. Yeah, it's just good stuff. Like, this is what good anime does. <laughs> you know what I mean? If this was a lesser budget show, if this was a lesser show, we wouldn't get this establishing shot. We wouldn't get this level of detail on it. Like... Like, I can pause this and look at it and, and infer things. That's 
fun. That's fun for me. This means that this is this was a good pick. You know what I mean? That's all I'm trying to say, really. So Karen has overslept. Clearly, she's like the sleepy one. We have the other character. I'm still blanking on her name right this moment, but um, she's seemingly associated with Karen for now. I get the feeling that you're going to be third wheeled a little bit, which is which sucks. It sucks for you. Because I feel like you feel pretty strongly about the main character. But um, but yeah, not to be, I don't think. Interesting detail here as well. Can't afford to be late, but still goes back for the hairpin. Clearly, it's very important. Again, just more simple early character stuff. Like, one of them is very wound up, and then the other one is just pretty nonchalant about the whole thing. You know, just good early stuff establishing what the expectations around certain characters are. Like, she's still half asleep, obviously, and then, like, kind of puts... She went to put her hand on her head as well and probably noticed the pin. That's nice. Another nice little moment here is this look, like OU. It's a very, very OU look when she, when she kind of puts the pin back on and, and kind of wakes up to herself. Because when she puts that pin back on, she's all better, all ready to go. But again, zooming in on this image, like, th correct me if I'm wrong, this bear here is also um, on her person later on, on her character design. So, um... So yeah, clearly keeping things consistent. Our overall production stuff of the episode, I guess, in the kind of animation department, it's pretty good. Has its pop-off moments. Uh, some of the small character stuff it, it, it is quite nice. Uh, backgrounds overall, get in there. They're okay. Some of them are a little bit generic, but uh, but this one here that I've highlighted is, is one of the better ones. There's a notable background when she's on top of that Tokyo Tower and kind of looking down in that kind of faux dream sequence thing that I thought was uh, was quite nice. Overall pacing flow of the episode was really good as well. I kind of, I didn't really feel feel the length of it, which is good. It's always good when, a, when an episode breezes by. I actually really want to watch more. That, that also helps as well. And the, the music. The music's obviously a standout. I'll be reading the lyrics to to the songs as well don't you worry um but just kind of the background stuff the orchestral stuff kind of the again setting tone setting mood it's not like a like a k-on opening right which is a very similar sequence in which yui struggles to get out of bed but we have this really jaunty almost like what's the word very very fast-paced, very frenetic song, right? Really matching the character. This is all very graceful and, and beautiful and that kind of thing. So it's a notable difference that the music is providing. This spot, position zero, I think we're calling it, is, is clearly very important. It also exists in the weird underground chamber. Um, Karen walks into the kind of room and, and yells out to nobody. Clearly, she's just very enthusiastic, very happy to be here, happy to be doing this, you know? She's student number one, Idro Karen, entering. And all the different students do this when they enter this room, for their first class of the day, presumably. She seems very, very excited to stretch with uh, with Karen as well. Her name being Suyuzaki Mahiru. Mahiru. Of course, I was trying to commit that one to memory. Mahiru. Mahiru very excited for Karen, for sure. Hoshimi Juna? Is it Juna? And clearly she'll be very important for later. And, okay, f first impressions of Claudine as well. She's just very over the top. Clearly, you're like prototypical theater star kid. Uh, I think it was implied that, that her and the other one, which whose name's escaping me, were the, were the leads last time. Um, this, this tracks with this kind of character, I think. Might get a rude awakening when they, she discovers that other people are better than her and may need to go through a little bit of a character arc. These kind of characters are normally my favorites, so... Looking forward to to that change there if that happens that way. But again, I've been assuming a lot of things about how this will play out, and it has been playing out that way. It, it is Bon like Bon Magnifique, you know? It's like um like French, I think. Anyway, surely somebody can correct me on that. I, I think I like Banana the most. Just maybe just because she's called Banana and has banana hair. I think that's kind of amazing. Uh, Dai Banana, I think, is uh her name kind of Dai Ba. Nana, um, very, very good. That is, that is some good stuff. And just continually pausing the episode. I think this is a great show for like pause shots of people. Like, like this could be a meme. Like this could be a meme. This could be a meme. Like there's just a lot of stuff going on in the background that, that that's quite appealing to me. I don't know. These two are kind of pushed to the wayside for now. Um, kind of pink and blue which is very classic kind of Yuri trope, kind of a pink haired character or red haired character or blue haired character. That's just, that's just classic. Okay. So, so, so you're like self-serious and you're sleepy. 
But we already have a sleepy one. You can't be can't be doubling up. So this is Kanruko and Futaba. Kanruko Futaba. Okay. What I can do here, you know, is put character names. That might be a very smart thing to do. I'm going to do that. So that's what I've got here now for the characters. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So unless the teacher becomes very important, I guess we also have giraffe, um, which we're going to talk about later. Uh, other than that, I don't think there's anybody super relevant that I'm missing out on. Either way, I like how the, everyone kind of stops talking and, and focuses on Tendo Maya. I think she's uh, clearly very confident, uh, kind of very similar to Claudine in that way. Maybe a little bit of a rivalry there. Positions herself immediately on that kind of uh, zero, number zero on the stage, the center stage position. And that kind of inspires everybody to, to kind of focus up and get ready. Uh, leading the pack in that way, there's clearly a competitive aspect. There's clearly a level of competition here, clearly a level of living up to expectation here at this school. And she's perpetuating that, that kind of culture throughout the group. Just, yeah, I probably won't put it down. Sakuraki Urala is the teacher. Urala? Urala. So now we get into a little bit of our backstory, a little bit of exposition. Prestigious female academy with 100 years of history. We do song, dance, everything basically, right? We're an art school. It's clearly a very important art school. It clearly has a very good program in that area. Clearly a lot of driven people there. Makes a lot of sense. We see this shot mirrored later with Hikari, clearly showing that they have a similar level of skill. Like she, she's joining back up. I think Claudine says a line later, which is she doesn't have like that that little bit of extra, the little bit of perhaps a je ne sais quoi uh, that, that, that they have, not playing with with a lot of soul. So it may be able to replicate the practical, but doesn't showcase a lot of the, the kind of grace and, and the other side of it, the kind of charismatic part of it, I guess. Specializing in everything, creating plays, see a lot of even traditional dance there, see a lot of people setting up a lot of backstage stuff too. Like like a theater academy, basically. We're, we're going to call it that. They're the 99th generation, making the next generation the 100th, which is kind of funny. We are, we are friends and rivals, you know, that, that kind of energy. Um, we're all aiming for stardom. But in the end, in the situation represented by the giraffe, it's kind of a bit of game theory to it. There's maybe a, a zero-sum game going on. We can't all simultaneously be aiming for the same thing. There is potentially only one spot that we may be fighting for. I, I don't know. Shoutouts to Banana Chan's lunch, which seemingly has like banana style flags in it, which is kind of incredible. I like that. In comparison, we have these two together, kind of uh, Karuko, Karuko and, and Futaba. I'm getting names. And we have kind of blue blue ribbon in the back, which is uh, Tenjo Maya, I believe. Um, she doesn't like her vegetables. Just a lot of side character stuff, building relationships before we've even really seen these characters talk all that much. It's it's good. Another thing we'll see is that uh, kind of those two before, the kind of pink hair, blue hair, sitting on the same side of the table, potentially, you know, not in conflict. These two se sitting on, on separate sides, right? So, so see in the, in the bottom corner there, if I hide my camera. Um, same side of the table, looking on at these two, kind of rivalrying it up, and while um, while our two in the middle, uh, you know, face to face, they're facing off. So we have Hoshimi getting ready for the festival, which is starting up next year. Kind of doing some really early prep. They're going to do the same show as last year, which was Starlight. So let's look at our little main cast here that's translated for us. We have Claire and Flora, who are who are supposedly our two main characters. There we've got Goddess of Fury, Goddess of Escape, Goddess of Arrogance, Goddess of Curse, Goddess of Jealousy, and Goddess of Despair. Okay, and each of these characters potentially had a role similar to one of these. There's maybe one of their sins of their character that they maybe need to overcome. Maybe. I don't know. That That's filled with meaning, right? You don't put that in for no reason. It's a literary illusion, like quite literally, you know? Banana likes to take a lot of photos, which I've noticed. It's all very, very cute. I like that. This is a photo of uh, the, the kind of performance they did last year. Just looking on here quickly, is this Banana just with her hair down? I was like, where's Banana? When Banana's not on screen, all the other characters should be yelling, where's Banana? I think that, that'd be appropriate. I really like um, Hoshimi's voice as well. Hoshimi or, J or, or Juna, whatever we're going to call her. Um, 
very lower register. I like that kind of for a more serious character. I think it's quite good. But, but when you say you're doing Starlight for the next three years, that means very different thing to when, when they say it because you know something about the draft situation, right? Where you're playing Starlight downstairs as well. And of course we have Karen who has her connection to Starlight through what we saw in the opening. She saw it when she was very young, presumably with Hikari, and that's kind of inspired what they have going on. The hairpins, all that side of it. I'm imagining the hairpins are some kind of merch associated with it. Maybe each character. You know, that, that kind of destiny feel to, to, to that level of the plot. She's certainly intense about it too. It gets right up in uh, Mahiro's face, but I'm not sure that she would mind that much. Like, she is so smitten for her yeah look at the faces are you kidding me yeah i think you're i think you're in for a little bit of a rude awakening with this new character yeah maybe next time you and i could play the destined two or something haha <laughs> you got no chance you got nothing <laughs> I like this shot here a lot as well. These two have kind of graduated from this table on the side and now watching this rivalry play on between Tendo and Claude Chan. Claudine. Like, great, just little character stuff everywhere. So so Claude went to Grandpa the food first because they thought that they were having, like, maybe a food race. But Tendo one-upped her by saying Grace first. That's just great. That's great stuff. So this is also an interesting scene knowing our context later, like the, the kind of pirouette and the, and the grab underneath. Uh, on top of it being very gay, it's also, she's saying this line to herself as well. I can still, I still have a chance. I can win. I can be the star of the show. You can be the star of the show too. I'm telling this to you, but I'm really telling this to me, right? And of course, she's not just talking about the play. She's talking about whatever's going on downstairs as well. Just, yeah, building nicely upon everything. This is just very good. Like, uh, character this way, character this way, character all over this thing, you know? Got the phone out again, kind of got banana colors on the on the phone case. If Yeah, this is a real treat to go back and, and watch through, to go back and pause on stuff. We see a, I guess, suitcase and a wheel. Um... I knew who this was immediately, but uh, but the characters find it eventually too. So again, we have Karen sleepy in class, similar to the start of the episode, but potentially see something by the end of the scene that perks her right back up. Similar to the hairpin, similar to what the hairpin represents, I think. So she starts to have a little bit of a dream sequence there as, as she's starting to fall asleep. Gear turning on the wheel of the of the suitcase. Again, symbolism, it's very good. These gears are turning, I guess kind of the, the the stage show back on. It's like behind the scenes stuff, like rigging of the curtains and that kind of thing. And it opens up to this glorious shot of Tokyo Tower, I think we're calling it. Knowing the French connection, I was very lucky I didn't say the Eiffel Tower immediately because I thought I was going to say something and that would have been dumb. Of course it's Tokyo Tower, that makes way more sense. And this was the shot I was talking about before, just, you know, classic stuff. Not, not a high level of detail in the background, of course, but just like good colors. It, you can really tell it's way off in the distance. That's just, it's well done. Mysterious character comes from behind and pushes you down. Down? Down down below maybe as well. Um, dream sequence is always fun to analyze as well. Uh, clearly got the stars in the hair. We clearly know it's Hikari. And you're going to start falling. You're going to start falling into the plot. That's good. Of course, it's very much like a fateful thing, right? Thinking about the hair clip getting pushed by, by Hikari just as she enters as a new exchange student or new transfer student, I guess we're calling them. Then we see the draft. The draft becomes relevant later. The sound effect of the draft came off Hoshimi's phone. And like, whatever this is, this is the indicator that you're, you've been summoned. We see a phone later uh, that Hikari has, which presumably would have had the giraffe on it summoning her to go fight. Kagura Hikari, I can finally give her a first name as well, that's nice. You play a very straight bat very early, I think you're, you're here for business, you're not here to make friends again. You clearly care a lot for the main character, you clearly care a lot for Karen, but you're not allowed to show it yet. And that that's what that last line of the episode is about, right? It's It's like... Despite everything, despite all my efforts to not show that I'm excited right now, you still got into this mess, which is terrible. I don't want this. I like how she thinks she's the main character, like standing up and like calling out the, the kind of transfer student's name and then getting called out on it like multiple times. But yeah, Kagura has been overseas. She's been doing uh, theater and that kind of school stuff in Britain and now is 
has transferred back. Maybe we'll get more context into why later. Maybe it has something to do with this whole giraffe situation. Has something to do with the whole Starlight promise idea that we have going on as well. She just keeps standing up randomly to, to, to say words. It's just, it's good. You know, she's clearly excited to see her old friend again. And the teacher's worried and then sends Mahiru through as well. That's good. So despite being in the hardest school to get into in the world for this profession, she's gone back here. Question mark. There's clearly something going on. Karen's just doing dance moves the whole time as, as we travel back as well. Clearly very excited. You haven't changed at all. She was kind of down in the dumps looking down. Springs her head back up when she says this. You haven't forgotten our promise. This looks distant. Huh. Karen's been a real dork here. Like, I guess us three will now share a room because of course I'm sharing a room with my old bestie. Sucks to be you, third wheel, like literally in the middle, like your third wheel ended up like like crazy. Sucks to be you. And upon kind of inspecting the room, seeing the kind of shirt that's on the bed, she walks out, clearly not welcome, I'm clearly not, this isn't my room, this is somebody else's room, I'm not going to intrude. But it's also like, like I'm trying to be distant on purpose, I, th I think that's a lot of it, right? Goes to her own room, perfect scene here, just as the door closes, doesn't wait for her. Clearly wants the privacy right now. He's clearly going through some stuff. But there's, despite it all, a simple welcome back. Then we get this gorgeous wide shot. Just the only thing that exists in the universe is the relationship between these two characters. And it is a kind of silhouetted, or what do we call it? Like over the top. It's shrouded, I guess, by by the by the tower, which is all important to what they, they're going to do. Like like clearly she's she's pained by the whole thing, right? Like the, the small little under the breath Karen. And then this shot, as I said before, it, it, it's mirrored from before. Clearly, she's just extremely good at what she does. It, it tracks from the school that she went to. And of course, we're in the seven-person shower. We're all showering at once. Um, and <laughs> the main character, Karen, is just kind of gushing all over for, for Hikari. She's almost like a grasshopper. I didn't know that that was a good thing. So yeah, whilst they're all showering, we have Hikari in Karen's room holding the picture clearly looking a little bit like forlorn and then the phone the notification in the foreground probably from the from the giraffe this is stupid too that like karen like runs into the scene and starts looking for like hikari under all the fucking throw pillows like she's not gonna be there like what are you doing it's just kind of funny and ridiculous i found it quite charming excuse me it wasn't claudine it was actually uh tendro i believe tendro maya uh, she doesn't have her heart in it, right? So so Claudine starts to bring up, well, we might have a new rival. No, no, she doesn't have her heart in it. We saw a previous scene where she just kind of looks down at her eyes. She's not maintaining eye contact. She doesn't look, you know, that kind of inspired look that, that you would have if you were really giving it your all. She's clearly concerned about something clearly to do with Karen. Oh, excuse me. So it wasn't her room before. This is actually uh Hikari's room. She just has the same photo. I see, I see, I see, I see. That would also explain... Uh, these kind of bear things in the foreground. Yeah, th those things. Those are clearly indicative of her as a character. The other bed isn't being used. Just, it works. Okay, that that, that makes more sense. Either way, we, we, we spy Hikari and she's kind of running away. She's running towards the school. She's followed by Karen and, and we discover a awful secret of the school. Apparently there's this elevator that wasn't here before. Um, it doesn't look like the kind of school that would need an elevator. And... Of course, we hit down. We go down below. What is down below? Yeah, th th this is an amazing twist in the episode, right? You see this and you're like, what is going on? Then this, like, like it's like a huge like sci-fi twist for the episode that I really appreciate. And today's the first day of auditions. This overbearing voice that we hear is the, the giraffe, um, clearly running, running show here. And we're auditioning. We're auditioning for that number one spot. We're beginning the review of passion. We're auditioning for position zero. We're auditioning for the tiara. We are, we're auditioning for that. It's a fight to the death, kind of. Like, essentially. That, that's as much passion and, and kind of drama we're putting into it, though. We're looking to become the top star. And we see Hikari, not Hikari, we see Karen put in the same chair that she was at the start of the episode, right? Still watching on in awe of what's going on. And then we get a song. We get a song. The, the subs are going to be up the top there. I'm going to give the song a, re a read through. I don't know how relevant they're going to be, such as the Sympho Gear, because in Sympho Gear, there's literally a power system in which these songs are relevant to what the characters are thinking. 
I'm just imagining that these are going to be parts of the performance, parts of the the kind of musical that they're doing that will reflect character motivations and stuff. The blazing fury cleaves the darkness and lights up these girls' deepest longings. The blades of fury. Okay. And of course, this is yeah, you know, two clashing colors. So so clashing colors. We're fighting, but also it's all very you know. It's like, it's like friendly rivalry personified in this image, right? It's very well done. But yeah, no, they're, they're, they're fighting in Starlight. This is Starlight the show, but they're also fighting. It's cool. Like the, the like the arrow goes right past their head. There's clearly a tangible combat component to what we have going on. And then draft, just random draft, because why not? The review has begun. Whatever you are, you're clearly running show. So you've also got like a weird crystal associated with you too, maybe? You, you, you have that thing that's kind of when you cut it off, you lose. That we see later. A flame that reaches the heavens burns through all that I am. Is the lyrics up the top there. Whoever puts on the brightest shining review is is on the path to becoming the top star. When the stars are drawn to sin, fall down as well. Review song until I've turned this world to ashes. Okay. I have a dream I can't concede. I have a sky I wish to protect. Just, just a lot of like, you know, combative, inspirational kind of get up and go type like this is the introductory song it very much feels like it and of course we're looking to kind of get that tiara and become the top star and do all that stuff right an arrow shooting across like a falling star chases after you and you're all desperate you're all stage girls after all right that's why you fight a memory that grows faint and distant is fated to disappear one day the memory of potentially a, a a show we saw more five years old. Either way, they're turning up the animation budget here like crazy as well. The camera's going all over the place. Like the the, the fight is well done. It's it's action packed, and you really feel the impact of stuff. Struggling against the oncoming wind, I made a silent pledge to myself: I won't let you interfere. And until I have turned this world to ashes, oh, it's the cloak. Okay, if it falls off, it's the end of review. You got to protect your cloak. I won't let you interfere, and until I've turned this world to ashes, my passion will continue to burn. So Hikari looks like she's in a little bit of trouble at the moment, and that's what inspires uh, Karen to step in. You do not care about being the main character. Someone like that does not belong here. Someone's goading her into joining, right? And that's exactly what she does. Kind of, Kind of like soft eyes into determined eyes. We're going to do it. Now take your leave. No, I'm going to use the draft's neck as a little bit of a way to get into the into the arena there. I made a promise with Hikari. I know we will definitely become stars together. There's only one tiara up there. That that's something I've noticed, right? Are we going to get to a point where it's going to be a battle between you two to see who makes it, right? Is are we going to be able to share something like that? Is the rivalry aspect of what we have going on even going to permeate down to that level? I don't know. But this is just, this is fucking fantastic. This is like Trigger-esque. I am remade, falling through that into this like massive sequence where we see like, she's dropped into the furnace, like the representation of her, the kind of pin, dropped into the the, the, the furnace. We're going to make her costume right here, right now. This is awesome. This is like, like almost scary. That, that that's a that's a level to this show that I didn't know it had. And we've made what look like arrows, maybe? Knives? You throw them? I don't know. I don't know. But th- this is like a weapon component to it before the costume is made. And there we go. There's the costume. Very cool. The makeup, the costumes, the dress, the, the cape, the everything. It's just awesome. That was fantastic. That was like a... That was like a almost magical girl transformation sequence esque, you know. And yeah, the, she just has this awesome intro where she introduces herself and and comes down and that's just fucking sick. I don't know what to tell you. Kind of soft eyes initially from uh, Hoshimi as well before firing the arrow. Don't get in the way. Like I don't want to fight you, but I will. As you do, I trust. I too have a dream I can't concede. Then this awesome shot as she's running along. So clearly this song is relevant to what what Karen has going on too. That that's you know I have a dream I can't concede. Deep within my pounding heart, my passion was silently set alight. Just now, just now it was. And yeah, planting the sword in position zero. Position zero. She's cut the cloak off of Hoshimi, Hoshimi uh, Juna. And, uh, and yeah, joined whatever we have going on downstairs. And this marks the end of the first day of auditions. You're clearly in the lead. You're clearly won. Um, 
And there's that star right up the top, the tiara, the the whatever we're trying to attain. And happy, look at Hikari-chan, look for approval. Hey, I did it. Hey, I saved you. Hey, I did, I did that. And then uh, Bakaren, Bakaren, kind of Baka Karen, right? <laughs> Karen Nitwit? Karen Nitwit, I see. Okay. They, they did a decent job of translating that. Okay. Uh, she's upset. Tears in the eye. Like, not the reaction you'd think from what she did. And then I think we have an ED. Yeah, we do, with with the kind of the credits over the top like that. And it's kind of a group song by the entire cast, I'm guessing. Who will be the one to claim that star at the top of that tower? And this is very slice of life fair, just, you know, a lot more character building stuff happening in the background. There's a whole lot of text on, on screen happening. I like the dino clocks come back too. Like it's harder to see right now, but um but I'm guessing, you know, you'll get a good lot of looks at this. A silent flame lit up inside of me, and now a burning longing fills my chest. We're not puppets on a stage being made to dance by fate. There's a little bit of internal motivation to it. Go take flight! I know I saw it on that day. The glimmer of an exploding star. Until we have our promise from long ago in hand, it begins before the curtain rises, the story plays out before my very eyes. And there's a pretty sick action scene happening in the background. In this new life of mine, I got to meet you. She's very happy now compared to what she was at the end of the episode, so so maybe there's something there. I got to meet you once again. And this is our, our final shot. Right? All, all of our characters, all nine of them. Uh, clearly we got our main two in the middle. I like the costumes a lot. I like... You're very separate, yeah? I like the, your colour scheme a lot. The rest are very, you know similar but i guess this is something i should have picked up from the very first key visual why do they all have swords i just imagined that they were in a play and they had swords in the play because they were playing people but no they have swords because they're fighting i see and yeah that's the end of uh that first episode there very very good i loved it a lot um i think a lot of it went over my head initially how good the character work was there's just constant character moments happening on screen which is probably the most impressive aspect along with that kind of second half of the episode twist that i really enjoy as well um i'm very happy that i didn't know that going in that's very nice but yeah like the characters like the overall story premise i think that's fucking awesome uh should lead to some cool confrontations we seem to have a similar problem to Symphony gear where we're not letting our songs just be songs we're, we're going to put dialogue over them and try to explain the songs as they're going on, where I think the songs do a pretty good job of explaining it themselves. Um, but I digress, that's a bit of a nitpick. Uh, music, background music seemed good, production overall seems pretty tight. Uh, not really a, a poor production, but not like a you know outstanding Kyoto Animation-esque masterpiece, but um, not everything can be. And yeah, looking very, very much forward to next week. Well, we'll probably do two episodes, I'm thinking. But, um, but yeah, very, very happy with that. Good recommendations so far. Again, uh, any comments about subs that I'm using that may not be great, please tell me. Any comments about what shorter stuff that I should know, I'm pretty sure that, that, that I'm all pretty okay there. And anything I might have missed, just comment below. Do that kind of thing. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new. And go on Discord. Discord's cool. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next week for more Review Starlight. Right here. Catch you guys later.